Hi, now here's another example in my series on proof by mathematical induction, where we've got to prove that the sum of the series 4 to the power r minus 1, r going from 1 to n, is equal to 4 to the power n minus 1, all divided by 3. So in the usual way, what we do is we test it to see if it's true when n equals 1. And once we've done this, we assume that it's true for n equals, say, k, and go on to prove that it's true for n equals k plus 1, based on that assumption that it's true for n equals k. And if it's proved true for n equals k plus 1, then since it's true for n equals 1, it must be true for n equals 2, and then for 3 and 4 and all positive integers. OK, so we start then with when n equals 1. So when n equals 1, we test the left-hand side here. So the left-hand side, LHS, is going to be equal to the sum of this series, 4 to the power r minus 1, with r going from 1 to 1. And based on that, it's going to be just a series with one term, 4 to the power 1 minus 1 in this case. 4 to the power 1 minus 1, which is 4 to the power 0. And anything to the power 0 is going to be 1. We now check out the right hand side, RHS, and we've got 4 to the power n, and then minus 1, all divided by 3. So when n equals 1, this is going to be equal to 4 to the power 1 minus 1, all divided by 3. 4 to the power 1, 4, take away 1, 3, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So clearly we can see that therefore the left hand side is equal to the right hand side when n equals 1. So it's true for n equals 1. OK, now we assume that it's true for some integer value of n, assume true for n equals, let's say, k in general. In other words, that means that the sum of r going from 1 to k for 4 to the power r minus 1 is going to equal, and we just substitute or replace that n with a k. So it's going to be equal to 4 to the power k minus the 1 all divided by 3. So we now check it out for n equaling k plus 1. So when n equals k plus 1, we'll just come down here, see what we get. For n equals k plus 1, we would have our series sigma of 4 to the power r minus 1, r going from 1 to k plus 1. That's going to equal the sum of the first k terms in the series. That's r going from 1 to k of 4 to the power r minus 1. And then plus the last term in the series, the k plus 1th term. So that's going to be 4 to the power k plus 1 minus 1. In other words, just simply 4 to the power k. Now what does this equal? Well, we've got the result of this. We've assumed it's true that it's equal to 4 to the power k minus the 1, all divided by 3. So just write that in. 4 to the power k minus the 1 divided by 3. And then we've got plus 4 to the power k, that last term. Now, if we're to prove that this is true for n equals k plus 1, we certainly need to have this all over one common denominator here, 3. So I suggest that we put this all over a common denominator of 3. So that's going to give us 4 to the power k, then minus the 1, plus, and then we need to multiply this by 3. So we've got 3 multiplied by 4 to the power k. Now I need to get 4 to the power k plus 1, minus 1 all over 3. I can see that I've got the minus 1 here, so that's looking good. How do I get that 4 to the power k plus 1? 
well, I've got one lot of four to the power k and I've got three lots of four to the power k. So clearly if I add those two together, I've got four lots of four to the power k. And then minus the one, all divided by three. And when I've got something like this, this is four to the power one times four to the power k, I can add the powers. So indeed I end up with equaling four to the power k plus one. Then minus the one, all divided by three. So I can see that since true, or if true, if true for n equals k, it's true for n equals k plus 1. Okay, because I've got wherever there's an n, I can see that I've replaced it with k plus 1. Now we know that it's true for n equals 1, so since true for n equals 1, we prove that at the very first part here, it must be, therefore we can say true for n equals 2. And if true for n equals 2, it must be true for n equals 3 and 4 and so on. In other words, it's therefore true for all positive integer values. Okay, so we say n is a member of the set of positive integers. All right. So I hope that's given you an idea then of how we can go about proving these summations of series by using mathematical induction.